I think we're on. Hello, everyone. Yes, welcome to High Thrive Live. I'm Heather Totes here with Mark Johnston, our international marriage expert. And we so appreciate everyone in the group that gave incredible feedback about your favorite topic for the week, which was how do I get my spouse to want to work on the marriage with me? Now, I want you to know one thing. I did change the language because language is very, very important. It can totally shift and alter the intention of a statement. So originally when I put the poll, I put how do I get my spouse to work on the relationship with me? Well, that completely flies in the face of everything that we teach. You can't get your spouse to do anything. So I changed the language of that to help my spouse want to work on the marriage with me. Um, and so this is some of the feedback that we heard from you. And maybe this resonates with you. If you guys can see in here, it's okay. As always, give us a thumbs up. Let us know that um, everything's coming in loud and clear. All right. So many of you were saying, and you know, check in with yourself. Does this sound like you? That I feel like my husband, my wife thinks everything is my fault. They're blaming me for all the problems in the relationship. I'm working really, really hard and they fail to see the good changes that I've made. Why don't they see the progress that I've made? Why don't they see these positive changes? And why isn't that enough for them to want to work on this with me? Um, and another you know, very common one was my husband, wife, they won't communicate with me. Like there's zero communication, very little communication or Communication is surface level, right? We can talk about kids, we can talk about business stuff, but as soon as I try to talk to them about the marriage or the relationship or working on us, they you know, stonewall, they bristle, um, they don't wanna talk about it, or maybe it even turns into an argument. So does that sound like you? Is that what you're experiencing? Any of these kind of situations? So what we're going to talk about today is how to help your spouse want to work on the marriage with you in a way that doesn't push them further away, right? In a way that actually pulls them toward you. That's their whole push versus pull method that we talk about and is going to be effective. So Mark, I will get to you in a minute, but <laughs> one thing that we often talk about, you know, Mark and I in our restoration equation is save your marriage on your own. So what I really want everyone to understand here is that the save your marriage on your own is being willing to go first and not waiting for your spouse to get on board. That is fundamental. And so what we're going to talk about today are the things that you can do yourself to encourage your spouse and increase the likelihood that they will want to work on this with you. Now, save your marriage on your own. That's the starting point, right, Mark? That is not our end goal. Our end goal is not for you to be the only one working on the marriage forever, right? That would be absolutely exhausting and that wouldn't be a true partnership. However, you need to recognize that that is the starting point. So if you have any questions about that, if you're like, hmm, I'm not so sure about that, then please go back, watch our Restoration Equation Masterclass and go through our Save Your Marriage on Your Own training videos uh, you can find them on our YouTube channel. You can also find them here in the Thriving Marriage video section. So that's just a little bit of background information. Um, but now let's say that you've been working on the saving marriage on your own. And now you're at the point where you would really like your spouse to want to work on things with you. So, Mark, what do we need to do? What is kind of the missing ingredient here that we need to get in place for that to happen? Well, I would say in the vast majority of cases, the missing factor is a hope that things could be better. As yes. Simple as that. And uh, if we look at this, if we look at a lot of the different situations, you know, people, they'll say, okay, I don't want to work on things because they don't think it's going to work or they've tried it before. Another way of saying it's not going to work. Or, you know, if they do try then you're, we're just going to go back to the way things were, which is another way of saying it's not going to work. You know, they have all these different reasons why things won't work, and all that translates down. If we give it one word, it's it's about hope, and that is absolutely critical if you want someone to work on something with you. If they don't have any hope, there's not going to be any chance that they're going to do anything here. Uh, and we could apply this to any number of different circumstances, not just marriage, but yeah, especially with marriage. Yeah, yeah. that's so true. And so in any case, pretty much when a spouse is 
pulling away, it's because that they have lost that hope, right? Like you said, they now no longer feel that they can be happy with you or that things can be better or that if they are better, that things are going to just get back to where they were before. If so, I could make this a little bit more clear, just to kind of spell it out, um, you know, we're not just talking about just general hope, but it's specifically, it's, you know, it's the belief that, okay, the future is going to be something better than what it is right now. And the belief that you have the power to do something about it. That is so true. So that's the first part, right? There's kind of two parts here and I'm going to post the, the next part. So the first part is that the future will be better than the present. And like Mark just said there, if I can navigate my uh, laptop fast enough here, the second part, which is so crucial, is that you have the ability or the capacity to get there. And we're going to go into detail about this. And um, we've even created a free PDF guide that perfectly maps this out step by step on what you need to do to bridge that gap between you and your spouse. So first off, though, Mark, I want to make something really, really clear for everyone. Sometimes hope can feel a little bit weak, like, oh, I hope for this. I hope I get a bunny for Christmas, right? <laughs> like, that's my kid's language right now. I hope we get a pony, <laughs> like, you know? So what's the difference between hope and wishing? Hope versus wishing. Well, I, I think a lot of times the um, when a spouse is saying, okay, let's work on this, let's work on this, and you get resistance from the other spouse, the, that resistant spouse is considering your hope, this wishful thinking. And the, the, the difference here is that wishful thinking is about believing that these goals are just going to happen. They're just going to pop out of nowhere. And so, you know, when you come and say, let's work on this, it can be better. Your spouse is saying, well, right. How's that going to happen? And the difference here is that hope is specifically knowing that getting to your goal is actually going to be hard work. If you don't have that element of like actually facing reality for a, a bit, it's the the uh, effort that's put out in front of them. It's going to seem unbelievable. Like if you say, oh, "No, it's going to be easy," no, your your spouse isn't going to believe that, and that it's going to turn into wishful thinking, and it's going to lower the amount of hope in the situation. Um, the thing is, getting what you want it really takes some effort. It and any circumstance and especially right here it's not going to be easy to say okay let's just snap our fingers and we're going to be a happy couple again it requires lots of plans lots of work lots of um you know lots of patience and understanding and it also requires a lot of willpower to sustain yourself and all those things if they can be demonstrated tend to add to the amount of hope in the situation Yes, I love this comment that we just got here. Anything worth having is worth working for. So that shows me right there that you aren't just looking for a magic bullet. Um, I'm going to be really honest. I get the impression many times when people come to us that circumstances are pretty desperate and they're in that fear mode. They're in that panic, um, that desperation. And they're looking for something and anything that would be a quick fix. Bottom line, guys, is that's wishful thinking. There is no mad, there, you know, there's just there is no magic bullet. There is no quick fix, but there are proven solutions. And hope is very similar to faith. And faith is a belief with action, right? So we're going to take action, like Mark says here. We're going to couple that with the hard work that it's going to take, pattern interrupting that it's going to take, looking at yourself that it's going to take, like I did the limiting beliefs live stream yesterday. If you didn't see that, that's foundational. You have to watch that. <laughs> so go back and study that and do the exercises that I give you because um, that's crucial. If you go into any of this with any of those background stories going on, it's not going to pay out the way you want it to, right? The same story is going to repeat itself. So there's a lot to do here, right, Mark? There's a lot to do. Mm -hmm. But bottom line is that we can do it. There are solutions. You just have to be willing to go into it knowing that it's going to take the hard work, that you're going to have to make some changes, some sacrifices, some pattern interrupts, 
breaking old habits and creating new habits, right? And like you said, it requires that willpower to sustain yourself, okay? Um, we'll go, I'll, I'll, you know, if you guys would appreciate this, I'll do another live stream later about willpower and again, push versus pull yourself toward what you really want because there's things that you can do to tap inside yourself that will give you um, the energy necessary to sustain yourself as you're doing these, they're, they're challenging things. As you're doing these challenging things, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, right? So it is possible, but it's going to take some work. So Mark, let's talk about, we have four elements to restoring health. And we're gonna go through them. Today, we're gonna go through the first two, and then we're gonna do a part two next time, next Thursday with our Thriving Marriage, um, High Thrive Life. So what is the first one that we want to do as we're working to restore our hope here? Okay, so if you're gonna have any hope at all, you actually have to have a valued goal. And we're talking about building up hope or desire to work on the marriage for your partner. So these goals have to be valued by your partner if, if they're gonna be building up hope. So if, you know, for instance, it is of value to them that the two of you have a happy marriage, then that's great and you can work towards that. But that's not always the case. Sometimes, you're, the husband or the wife is so far gone, they're maybe submitting the divorce papers or doing something along those lines. And so you take it a little bit further back and you say, hey, let's just have something that we can do right now, something that's valued, like reducing tension or being able to get along. So in the event that divorce does happen, we could co-parent together and not kill each other or you know, some, something along the, those lines that is really of value to them. If you can get that hook there, um, it's gonna be so much easier to have some hope that something could be better. But right there, just having a goal just isn't enough, obviously, that's just one component. Alex, you're asking me for the first one, I don't know if you had anything more to yeah. add. So, okay. There's my, there's my camera. I'll try to hold it steady. <laughs> so this is the guide that we've put together for you. And I see some of you are already, um, you know, asking for the guide. So we will definitely get that to you. And I appreciate that you're dumping on it and that you're eager for this. It's very important. So I honor you for that. So here on the first one, goals are the anchors of hope. These are Mark's words, by the way. I'm quoting him because he's, he's brilliant, isn't he? Oh, my goodness. He's so awesome. <laughs> so goals are the anchors of hope because they provide direction and an end, po end point for hopeful thinking. So you wanna make them specific and clearly pictured by you and your spouse. The more you can clearly see them, the more powerful and impactful they will be. Um, and again, this is like bridging the gap, right, Mark? You're, you and your spouse are over here, they're pulling away, they don't wanna work on the marriage. What you want to do is find out why, like what is it that's, that's driving that and how can you bridge that gap to work together as a team to have a common goal here, right? That value goal that will bring you together. Yeah, I wanna point out the important part in this. It's not simply going to your spouse and say, hey, let's, let's be happy together. The important part is, you know, a little bit of what I, <laughs> I was saying there and um, that your partner can actually envision the goal. You know, I, I'm, I'm just gonna pull back the curtain a little bit you know, Heather and I do this a little bit, even with sales, with trying to get you guys to um, work with us because we know it's gonna work. We There's certain language that we use in order to help you envision the goal of being happy in your marriage. And do you know what happens with that is people then have hope that they can actually get there. Um, and so, yes, that's a sales technique, but we can also apply that to having hope for a happy marriage. The better that they can envision that goal, the more hope that they can have. Yeah, so kind of summing this up, would you say, because I'm this is my word, so you correct me if I'm wrong, Mark. <laughs> He's the expert here as far as these things go. So that it's finding out what is needed from your spouse, connecting them to the vision that you can provide that, and that that can be a reality. Awesome. Yeah. I nailed it. Yay. 
<laughs> oh, that's exactly right. Um, you know, one of the things that I love about my wife is she's so good at these sort of things is ha she has that vision and she has that goal in mind. And she, she always pulls me into these, <laughs> these goals along with her because she's just a very hopeful person. And this is why, I mean, it, I mean, she wasn't necessarily conscious that this is what she's doing, but this is what it is. This is exactly what it is. Right. And when you have like a needs mismatch or just like a major misunderstanding in marriage or one person's pulling away, I'm just going to relate this to my marriage, which is very well and thriving. However, there are certain things that Ben and I don't always understand about each other. So I don't understand the vegging, <laughs> the, the need for video games and that kind of thing. All right. I do at some level. However, when we have a common goal and I can understand what he's actually needing, then we can work together to create that value. And I can see where he's coming from and be able to provide that in a better way. So that's a simple example. Yes. I love it. <laughs> I'm going yeah, to point out how all these things connect. Um, you know, if we go back to our restoration equation, what's the first part? It's about understanding. Understanding. Right. These, these things. All of, all of our stuff, it connects in many ways. And there's a reason why all of this works and why we keep talking about all these things that, that connect is because it's, you know, under, you know that, that restoration equation there is kind of the foundation. Understanding is helpful. Yes, exactly. All right, now let's go to the next one. So we've created this goal with our spouse. We've created this common ground, something that we're gonna work for that we can connect to, we can envision it. And it's inspiring, but it's not enough, right? So we gotta need to get to the next part. So our second part of restoring that hope so that your spouse wants to work on the marriage with you is pathway thoughts. I thought this was just, first of all, beautiful imagery as we go into it. But Mark, explain to us what pathway thoughts are. Well, pathway thoughts are just being able to think that there are paths to your goal. Um, so if you imagine this as a very literal path, if you say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm, my the path to happiness is way over here and right in your way is this big fat rock and there's no way around it. What kind of hope do you have there? You really don't have much. But if you then look to your, you know, to your left and right, you can see, hey, there's a pathway around this rock or there's a pathway over the rock or there's actually, 10 other pathways to get to the goal besides going down this one path you can say oh, rock, right? what you can even oh, go every way to get around the rock <laughs> but you know if you have lots and lots of pathways then it becomes like in your mind you can say well okay there's lots of ways i can actually get what i want here and even if something pops up it doesn't matter because i have another way to get there um, we can see this in other areas in life. Like if my goal was to become rich and I thought my only path there was by winning the lottery, I'm not going to really have that much hope. I don't, uh, maybe other people do, but I don't have much faith in the lottery as a, as a financial plan. <laughs> um, so I would say, okay, I don't, that's my only path. I don't really have much hope there. But if I said, okay, what, Maybe there's some other paths there. Maybe if I really advance in my career and I get a better education and then I start investing and then I develop some passive um, methods of income, I'm going to have more hope that I can actually attain my financial goals there. And as so the goal is kind of this vague thing in some ways. It's kind of this big, big idea. And the pathways are all the ways that you're going to get there. Right. So I really love what Bruce Lee said when he said, like, be like water. You have an obstacle and maybe what's your rock? I'm asking you like this, like you can put your rock in the comments. What is that obstacle? For many of you, it's going to be the divorce, right? Divorce papers. The rock is my spouse took off their wedding ring. Your pathway might be my spouse says they don't love me anymore. Your pathway you know, or your rock might be um, my spouse is having an affair. They have a partner that they would rather be with than me, or they keep going back and forth. Um, your rock might be, we can't communicate. They shut me out. They stonewall, they silence. What is your rock? Okay. Let's bring this home right to where you are. And what would be the pathways around that? And what would be numerous ways around that? Use your incredible mind, use your incredible creativity, 
take some time and some silence to really tap into that, create these different pathways to that goal. All right, yep, pa papers, wedding rings, been off for months, exactly. And when you're staring at that rock, you're gonna keep running your head into the rock again and again and again and again. I know, because I've done that in my own life, right? Sometimes it seems to take up the entire vision and all you can see is that painful, awful thing that's right in front of you. So what you wanna do is be like water and instead of running into the rock again and again and again, go around it and do that by applying this principle of creating pathway thoughts, creating different pathways to your goal. This is brilliant, Mark. I so appreciate you sharing this with us. Well, I'm, so, I'm not gonna you know, take all the credit. You know, a lot, of, I just wanna point out just the general idea of different these different points I am taking from what's called hope theory. This is a positive, you know, used in positive psychology. Um, I'm just simply taking this idea and applying it to the, the specific problem of marriage problems. Um, but there's a reason why that, you know, years of research on hope came down with these few things. It's because this is really how it is. Exactly. Yep. All righty. So like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna go into the next two steps next time, just for the sake of time, and so that you can kind of digest these. However, in our free guide, and I'm loving how many of you guys are wanting this, you can't really see it very well on my phone, sorry, but I made it and I like it. I like making these, I like making them pretty <laughs> and putting it together for you guys. Um, in the guide, it goes over the entire process, the entire four steps here to helping your spouse want to work on the marriage with you. So make sure to get your hands on this and start to apply these things. Again, it's the tip of the iceberg. And like Mark said at the beginning, it's not wishful thinking. It's not uh, ramming your head into the rock. It's not focusing on the rock, but it's creating a plan that will inspire hope and confidence in your spouse as you work on these things and do the hard work that is necessary. Uh, I just want to share with you real quick to show you the hope that is possible for you that you can start to do these things yourself and that they will work. They will work. It's a proven, it's a proven process, right? We take the guesswork out of it and they work no matter what the rock is. Like I told you, it's the divorce papers, it's the wedding ring off, they don't love me, it's an affair, it's addiction, um, it's pornography, it's whatever it is, right? Communication, that's the symptom. If you're focusing on that, you can't get around it. So what we wanna do is get around that and start to restore that hope and you can do it. Okay, so Silas is a past client of ours. Um, name has actually changed for privacy, but he said, I'm a born skeptic, okay? Save my marriage on my own. When I first saw your ad and read your emails, I thought, yeah, right. Well, happy to say I was wrong. I learned that you can't get what you want from doubt. Doubt would be the opposite of hope, right? Fear was keeping me back from everything I wanted. I took a leap of faith. That's where I want you to really key in here. I took a leap of faith. That leap has brought my wife back to me. She moved in on Thursday. Pretty big think and win. Thanks, y'all. So I just appreciate Silas sharing with you that these things are possible. You can start to restore your marriage on your own. You can restore hope in your spouse when you go about it the right way. When you shift your mindset from that fear to a place of certainty and calm, as well as some creativity, like we talked about, creating multiple ways to get around the big obstacles, um, get around your spouse's disbelief and their unwillingness to work on it and work together. You can get there. We see it every single day and it is beautiful. It is inspiring and it can't, it is real. It is real. Bottom line, this isn't wishful thinking. It is reality. Now you have the choice if you want to apply it to your marriage or not, if you want to learn the right way to do it, that's gonna get you there. So again, type in the comments that you want hope. Uh, the guide, we'd be happy to give that out to you. And if you are interested in working with Mark one-on-one, -on -one, like Silas did here, so that we can help you remove those obstacles, remove that disbelief in your spouse, remove the disbelief that's in you, like remove that huge obstacle that's blocking you, um, then feel free to reach out to us. We would love to work with you in our premium express coaching. That's where Mark and I work with you one-on-one. -on -one. It's not for everyone. It is for those ready to take action and are hungry for change and willing to do what it takes to get there. So Mark, we so appreciate you. I appreciate everyone for joining. Any final thoughts? No, I think we're, 
We're good. Okay, well, I'm on a Star Wars kick with my kids in Halloween, so I'm going to say, may the hope be with you. <laughs> 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 have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon.